The Dallas Stars bounce back with a big win over the Winnipeg Jets by a final score of 4-1 to to stay in first place in the Central Division. Niels Lundqvist returns. The month of February is over and things are starting to look up. Let's jump into it next on Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to another episode of Locked On Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer of 105 Through the Fan and play-by-play voice of the Chippewa Steel. Please be sure to subscribe. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your first listen. I told you better days were ahead, Stars fans, and it's a great bounce-back win for the Stars. They hold on to first place in the Central Division, a convincing win over the Winnipeg Jets last night by a final score of 4-1. to one. Good to see Niels Lundqvist back in the lineup. We'll talk about him. We'll talk about the month of March. I think the Stars can do some real damage in this month. Happy Friday. By the way, Stars fans, the month of February is over. It was very bleak, but things are starting to pick up for the stars and we're going to be very positive here on a Friday and uh, hopefully we uh, have another win on the weekend against the San Jose Sharks here tomorrow. Let's jump in to all the juicy stuff in a very, very solid win against the Jets. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 $5 bet. That's 150 bucks. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. The three games that the Stars have played against Winnipeg this season have been very quiet. And I mean that in a good way. The games have been very quiet. They don't give up much. For the most part, they keep the Jets to the outside. They force a lot of perimeter shots. Ottinger stands tall when he needs to be, but they get enough offense and they just buckle down defensively. And we got a great, great display of that last night. Very connected defensively. Forwards tracking back hard, picking up guys, lifting sticks, getting in shooting lanes, getting in passing lanes. Otter's night was fairly easy, and they dominated right off the hop. The first period was the difference maker. They get three goals in the first period. Jason Robertson, Joe Pavelski, and then Logan Stankoven with his third goal in his first three career National Hockey League games. He's the first player in Stars history to have a three-game goal scoring streak in the first week of his NHL career, and that shift is the embodiment of Logan Stankoven. He works his tail off to track back in the neutral zone, puck checks a jet, curls right back in, gets to the front of the net, and he gets the job done. Man, he has provided a phenomenal spark for this Stars lineup. Him and Johnston flying down the sheet. They had a couple of glorious looks. Stankoven should have had two in this one, but it just rolled off his backhand in the third period. Yes, I will take credit for the top line. All three members notching a goal after we talked about it yesterday. They've been pretty non-existent. Robertson gets in on the action and then Rope Hints with his 24th of the season on the empty netter towards uh, the end of the contest. But th- this is such a great recipe that the Stars can follow down the stretch, especially come playoff time. Their offense can be opportunistic. They can execute. They can score enough. And they do have the makeup or the ability to shut down opposing offenses. And Winnipeg is not that exotic. And I'm thinking to myself last night, is it just me that Winnipeg reminds me of the 2021-22 stars? 
they have a really talented score in Kyle Connor. They got a great defenseman in Morrissey, and they got one heck of a goaltender in Connor Hellenbach. And maybe it's confirmation bias because the Stars have played so well against the Jets this season. But that team doesn't scare me a whole lot. And I've said this multiple times. And maybe this is unfair and I should be giving Winnipeg credit where credit is due. And I've also mentioned Helen Buck is the one guy that scares me. He could turn a series into the Stars versus Flames <laughs> if he stands on his head. But their offense really doesn't have a ton of firepower. And they have some excellent players, albeit they have some excellent players. But I, I think the Stars do such an excellent job uh, against them, taking away someone like Kyle Connor, and uh, they were able to unleash some of their firepower. Stan Coven is so good, folks. He's so, so good. And I don't know if I mentioned this yesterday when we were talking about the, the Chris Tanev trade, but Stan Coven has forced himself into the lineup. He will not be going back down. Jim Neal is not done. He is going to make another move because Stan Coven has to stay in the lineup when Sagan returns, when Dodonov returns, whoever it is, because he deserves so, number one. And number two, he makes Johnston and Ben phenomenal. He makes Ben really good, I should say. Johnston's been consistently good throughout this season. There are more moves on the horizon, and I think... Uh, will definitely sure up the back end in that process. The Stars outchanced the Jets at 5 on 5 in the first period uh 15 to 6, outchanced them in the game 32 to 17. There was a stretch in the second period where they were on their heels a bit, didn't give up a ton of grade A chances, but they were chasing and Winnipeg really controlled the game namely uh, due to the the faceoff dots the stars really struggled in that second period for uh, a stretch and Winnipeg played with the the puck a, a bit more even though the stars won on the dots 58 percent last night they go 0 for two on the power play and the one goal they gave up was a real fortunate bounce and Domestikov just slammed it home Miro made an excellent play he came out tried to take away the passing lane. It ricocheted off his stick, and Lindell tried to swat it away, and then it fell completely perfectly for Nemestikov, who jammed it home. And if not for a fortuitous bounce, Otter would have had two shutouts this season um, uh, against the Jets. Some some more numbers in the contest in terms of giveaways. Stars only had three on the night. Jets had three. Takeaways, though, the Stars ended up with five. They were really, really hungry, and everybody all over the ice, uh, I thought, up and down the lineup played really good. Rope Hints was a plus three, along with Jason Robertson. And when that top line is contributing and is engaged in making plays, it just adds to the layer of offense the Stars have. They have versatility. Ver versatility is what it should have said, is what I should have said. <laughs> versatility. Uh, no, they're, they're very versatile because it, it doesn't have to come from one line. And for about a week there, it was coming from Johnston and Stan Coven. And last night is a step in the right direction. Step in the right direction. All four lines, four checking hard. They matched up physical. Uh, Physically, they they just hounded the Jets. They took away a lot of time and space. And when they play their best hockey, it, it's a theme throughout the season. They, they forecheck hard. They win a ton of board battles because they're relentless. They're just relentless. And we haven't seen that enough in some stretches of their play this season, especially in February, which was a brutal, brutal schedule. But when they're relentless like this, they're a really, really hard team to beat. They're really, really hard. They don't force Ottinger to be some 
out of body experience <laughs> in between the pipes. He's solid. He makes a few big stops here and there. They're opportunistic. They execute and they can shut you down. And uh, I, I think that's a, a great uh, a trait to have. And, and they seem to show it against the Jets every single time. <laughs> and we've seen that in, uh, in three games this season against Winnipeg. Big, big props to Rope Hens. A huge bounce back game. Looked like himself just flying down the rink. He, he was very direct. He picks up a couple of points. Him and Pavelski do 1.93 goals for a game score 3.61 for Hintz to lead the way for the Stars in over 17 minutes of play. Stan Coven just played under 15, but he was effective as ever. 1.34 expected goals for. That was third on the team, only behind Wyatt Johnston and Jamie Ben Stan Coven is here and he's making his presence known. Jake Ottinger, the expected goals against was just 1.87. And you love to see that. That means the stars were excellent defensively. They were, were really strong in front of him. They boxed out. They were physical. They, forced rebounds wide. They forced Jets away from the middle of the rink, and the interior was pretty much bottled up. Winnipeg had a tough time getting to the front of the net, and that's another characteristic of great stars wins. They're really good in that net mouth, the little 10-foot radius around Ottinger. And when they do that, they... They usually, they usually get the job done. They outshot, and what I love, I would have loved for them to capitalize on the five-on-three late. They still struggle just to score that power play goal, just score the goal, and you take a little drama out of it. But it was a good third period. Outshot them sixteen to six, and they didn't sit on their lead. They had a two-goal lead heading into the third. They didn't just sit there and try to wind the clock down. They 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 pressured when they could. Winnipeg had to be hungry. They made a couple of in a, uh, inopportune pinches here and there, and they got some looks. Helen Buck was phenomenal down the stretch to keep the Stars off the scoreboard. If it wasn't for him, Stars would have had four or five, probably five in the game, and uh, it's... It, uh, makes the makes the margin uh, that much larger but a, a good night overall it's a solid bounce back game Ottinger with uh 25 uh, saves on 26 shots he's the first star of the night Pavelski with a couple of points good to get him back on the score sheet uh all three of those guys on that top line uh had some droughts some lengthy droughts they they needed to to see some uh go in and they did so um, a great sign moving forward. Uh, and another one of those signs was Niels Lundqvist. Lundqvist returns from concussion protocol. Looks pretty good in his game. Let's talk about him, the future of this Dallas Stars decor, and more in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by... Fan Duel. Go ahead and download the Fan Duel app. Get buckets with your first bet on Fan Duel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet. That's a hundred and fifty bucks if your bet wins. You can bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams. You got quick bets. You got live same game parlays, exclusive props and a lot more. Watch that NBA slate. Make some money while you're hanging out on the couch each weekend when you're not watching the stars. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. So Niels Lundqvist returns from concussion protocol. They're happy to have another right shot defenseman back. Him and Hockenpah are now back in the lineup, which is a good sign. And Lundqvist really did not miss a beat, which uh, I, I'm pretty surprised. He, he, of course, had that great stretch of improvement when Miro Haskinen went down 
in uh, early January and was kind of a silver lining to the the Miro absence, the strides he made and really found a spot in the lineup, forced his way into being an everyday player. Even once Miro returned, there was that stretch early on in the season where he was in and out of the lineup once again, like we saw last year. And Lundquist just played under 14 minutes. They were cautious with him. Expected goals against 0.22, playing along Suter, 2.43 game score. It was a, a real solid night for uh, Niels Lundquist. He was really great in some of his battles. There was a, a play in the first period, I believe. It could have been the second where he was tracking back. There was a, a puck that was thrown towards Otter. Lowry was crashing the net, and Lundquist just put a shoulder into him, knocked him down, and took him out of the play. He he uh, he, he took a few hits. He just was solid along the boards, made some excellent outlet passes, kind of sprung the offense a few times. He jumped up in the play, uh, and that is something that he's really added to his game. You can tell he's a bit more confident, uh, which makes the Stars that much more dynamic, and uh, you have to be really excited uh, about what Niels Lundqvist can provide because you're thinking about halfway through the season, are you going to let him go at the deadline? Because... You, you seem to be wasting him to some degree, right? If, if he's not playing, maybe he's expendable. And I don't think that's the case anymore. Uh, I, I think he can be a very valuable defenseman to the stars on that, on that third pair. Um, when, when Tanev gets into the lineup, we may see him tomorrow against San Jose, but more than likely next week, there's some fluidity to the situation with immigration and everything. Thanks, Canada. <laughs> so we'll see when Tanev gets in the lineup. I would love to see. These would be my pairings moving forward. Tanev and Haskin, and you get Haskin in on his left side. Then you put Harley, and I really like Lundquist. I think Harley and Lundquist would be a lot of fun. And really good. You spread Harley out a bit. You don't have to play your two best defensemen together. And then you have a combination of Lindell and maybe Suter. Uh, Lindell and, and, and Hockenpah. Uh, I, I think Lindell has to stay in the lineup. He's played really good. He, he's been really solid. He has his moments, of course, but he's a big-time penalty killer. Some of those minutes will be taken away from him because Chris Tanev is very valuable in penalty killing as well. Um, and, and now you, you just you have more options. Hockenbaum may not have to play every day. And come playoff time, the Stars will have the opportunity from what we saw from last season, where depending on maybe what team you're playing or the type of game you expect leading in from, let's say, a game two to game four, the the vibes or the, um, the style of play is going to differ uh, due to injuries, whatnot. Whatever you think, you can plug in a guy that fits or suits that style of play better. Maybe you need a more physical, uh, more physical presence. And you want Hawk and Paw in there instead of Lundquist. Uh, maybe the game's fast paced. Like, let's say you play Seattle team and you need a little bit more giddy up, and Lundquist comes into the lineup. Um, then you have a chance to play around with it where we saw last year Connor Miller would jump in uh, and then he would be switched out with Hanley. You have that opportunity now because you have some depth. It, it, it's not fantastic, but you now have. Uh, a chance to mix and match some pairs. Maybe you want to keep Harley and Haskin in together. And then Tanev and Lindell is kind of like your shut down defensive pairing. And then you put Harley back down with Suter where Harley can overcompensate for the lack uh, of Suter's mobility. But uh, Suter does provide a bit of toughness here and there. He has his moments. He absolutely does, but he can be mean and, and he's not afraid to, to be that physical presence every once in a while. And that can be very valuable come playoff time. Um, and I know it's it, it reared its ugly head last season, but you, you just have to wrap your head around it and uh, be okay with it because he's not leaving. <laughs> he's not going anywhere and uh, Pete DeBoer is going to rock with him. So um, great to see Niels Lundqvist return. 
thought he looked uh, really, really solid. And uh, that, that's a great sign. Oh, excuse me. Uh, moving forward uh, for Dallas and can't wait for Tanev to join the group and, and, and see what kind of pairings we get. I, I think you just have to have Tanev with Haskin and get him on his, get him on his right side. And then you could put Harley and Lundquist together. That is really, really intriguing. Um, or you put Harley back with Suter, as I mentioned, um, and, and kind of go from there. So uh, decisions will be made, but that's what I think that the pairing should, should probably be uh, moving forward. And uh, March is here, Stars fans. February is over. It was a tough, tough month. March is looking up. I'll tell you why in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal before you even check out. You can buy tickets within seconds. Also, they have exclusive deals, baseball games, basketball games. You want to go to the next Stars game. Baseball is right around the corner. Concerts, comedy, theater, you name it, they have it. And Game Time Guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time Stars fans. Download the Game Time app. You. Go ahead, do it right now. Create an account. Use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N. That's Locked On for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guarantee. Be sure to check out Locked On Sports today. It's available on YouTube as well as Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports today is here for you covering 24-7 the top sports stories of the day with local experts on Locked On, plus the national shows covering every league. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Never miss an episode of Locked On Stars. Shout out to all you everydayers out there and shout out to all of you that may have tuned in yesterday to the Chris Tanev episode and we got to celebrate Jim Neal and the masterclass move that uh, he made to acquire Chris Tanev. Glad to have you on board for this playoff push. You can follow me at jet 19 on the X Twitter thing or Locked on Stars. Plenty of stuff every single day. March is here. The March for the playoffs. This is a great sports month. It always is. You got March Madness, the basketball. Uh, I said the basketball. NBA starting to, <laughs> to heat up. Uh, NHL, you just got a little bit of everything. So it's, it's a great time to be a sports fan. But looking ahead here in the month of March, the Stars will play 13 games, and I'm pretty bullish on their chances to make up some ground because, of course, Winnipeg still has four games in hand and only trail the uh, uh, the Stars by a couple of points. And uh, Colorado, with their win last night, uh, are still in the mix. 13 games in the month of March. Nine of those are against non-playoff teams currently. Nine of those teams are not in the playoffs, and frankly, not very close. And not that Dallas is going to steamroll all these teams, but <laughs> uh, they have the opportunity to. They get the Sharks twice here in the month, three times, excuse me. They get San Jose, who of course is in the basement. The Ducks, they get New Jersey, who's still six points out of a playoff spot. Coyotes twice, who have really, really dipped here. And then you get Seattle uh, at the end of the month. So you have to feel really good about your your your, your outlook here. And uh, we, we kind of took a look at this uh, earlier in the month, if you remember, uh, about 
the projections or where the stars were going to finish uh, within the division and took a look at the projected point total for remaining opponents. And the stars had the fifth easiest schedule moving forward. February was just terrible. It was brutal. They played a ton of hockey (laughs) and they played really, really good teams. They have a chance here to make up some ground. And yes, Winnipeg has four games in hand, but these head-to-heads that the Stars are playing, uh, they, they've already won three of them, and I know they've already crapped the bed against uh, Colorado. They get another crack at them one more time, and uh, maybe you make up some ground, and the final game against Winnipeg maybe determines if you win the Central Division on April 11th. <laughs> uh, that, that seems like that's going to have some implications. Stars also take on LA. They take on uh, Florida, who's been real good. They, they got a pretty decent uh, home and road split here. Uh, they get to stay at home uh, tomorrow against San Jose. Then they're back on the the uh, West Coast swing, which I love those. going to be some late nights, <laughs> a couple of 930 starts. But you get San Jose. You get Anaheim and Los Angeles. You come back home for a few, uh, a nice uh, five-game homestand, actually. Florida, New Jersey, L.A., Arizona, and Pittsburgh. So um, a a lot to look forward to in the month. Uh, A couple of teams you should have no problem defeating. (laughs) Um, But it can always turn into an adventure. I think this is a great month for Ottinger to get into a rhythm. Maybe they, they ride him hard get him to play a lot of hockey because he hasn't had the ability to to play consistent hockey himself and just play consistently in general because of the injuries and then wanting to be really cautious. Maybe they they let him go here. Take take the reins off. Help him find a groove. Um, and uh, he was good uh, against Winnipeg, but namely the team was way better in front of him. The team was bipolar opposite of that game against the avalanche when it was a, a shooting gal, a gallery on Jake Ottinger. Maybe the uh, new mask has something to do with it. That's uh, pretty clean. So uh, March, I, I think is going to be a solid month. It begins tomorrow. San Jose versus the Dallas stars at home, seven o'clock puck drop for that one. You could catch the hometown broadcast on Sirius XM. Go to the SXM app and search stars to take on the hometown broadcast. Happy Friday, Stars fans. I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. It has been a phenomenal week. It started off pretty poorly. I'll be completely honest with a couple of losses. I was dreading the Wednesday episode, and then Jim Neal decided he was not happy with where his team was at, and he goes out and gets Chris Tanev. Maybe we get our first sight of him uh, tomorrow against San Jose, but uh, it could very well come next week on the road trip, a little West Coast swing. All things told, a lot of positive signs moving forward. Stars are getting healthier. It's starting to snowball positively, as I talked about yesterday, uh, instead of negatively and bad things happening. Better days are ahead, and hopefully it begins tomorrow against the San Jose Sharks. All righty, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Be sure to comment. Let me know your frustrations with Dallas. Let me know your um, celebrations. But Logan Stanko, oh, oh, stanky, baby. Three goals in three games. The first player in franchise history to do that in the first week of their NHL career. That is what I'm leaving you with. See you next week. So long, Stars fans.